Good morning and welcome to St Ninian's Parish Church here in Christophen in Edinburgh. My name is James Aitken, I'm the minister here at St Ninian's and it's a pleasure to uh, welcome you to this online service here at St Ninian's, our Harvest Festival service this morning, at the Sunday the 6th of October. We're celebrating harvest both here online and in the church itself at 10.30 on Sunday mornings as we always do worship together in the sanctuary 10.30 on Sunday mornings and you're invited to join us in person there as well. But whether you're online or in the sanctuary, we worship together as a congregation of St Ninians. Attached to this video are an order of service and some intimations. Please have a look at the intimations when you get a chance. Um, there's no additional intimations I have to give you. Um, otherwise, <coughs> at St Ninian services, um, we always uh, begin our worship by wishing each other uh, the sign of peace with the words, peace be with you. If there's someone watching this with you this morning, then uh, please turn to them now and say, peace be with you. Or if uh, you're watching on your own, why not uh, pick up the phone at the end of the service and speak to one of your friends and say to them, peace be with you. God of generosity, God of abundance, God of love beyond measure, you are our good shepherd, we lack nothing. You make us lie down in pastures green, you lead us beside quiet waters, you restore our soul. You are the God who clothes the flowers of the fields, you feed the birds of the sky and fed the five thousand. May each one of us find great joy and spiritual nourishment as we worship together today. Amen. We sing hymn number 233, Come, you thankful people, come. Hymn 233.
Let us pray. God of creation, together this morning we celebrate the beauty and the bounty of your world that sustains the lives you have given to us. We rejoice at the crunch, chew, swallow and smell of the food we eat, the taste of meat and the variety of fish, the goodness of vegetables and the luxury of fruit, the sweetness of sugar and the savour of salt, the thirst-quenching refreshment of water, the comfort of tea, the fuel of coffee and the wholeness of milk. God of life, who lived in Jesus Christ, together this morning we celebrate bread, the bread of life that nourishes our souls, helping us to find the way through life and to know you. God of holiness, who is present in our world and whom we meet when together we gather as a church, a part of your body on earth to worship you, May your spirit of holiness breathe through us, bind us together and send us out into the world to be harvesters of souls for your kingdom. This harvest day, help us to celebrate the life of your people on earth, the work that they do to sustain life and the bounty of your earth that produces that sustenance. But help us also to remember that we forget about the harvest. We take an apple from a tree and eat it. We pour milk from a jug and drink it. And we forget that they are gifts of your creation. We buy a packet of food and enjoy it. We open a bottle to quench our thirst. And we forget all the work undertaken to produce them. We throw away excess food from our plates. We let water run down the drain and we forget all those who need food and water. We pause when faced with abundant variety to decide which is our favorite food today. And we forget all those who have no choice at all. Generous God, in our plenty, we do not appreciate all that we have. Forgive us when we forget those whose harvest is meagre and limited. Forgive us if we forget those who bring it to our tables. When we are genuine in our gratitude, make us also genuine in our generosity. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The first Bible reading this morning is from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy at chapter 8 and the first 10 verses. This entire commandment that I command you today, you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you, to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep the commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell those forty years. Know then, in your heart, 
that as a parent disciplines a child, so the, the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. The second reading is from the New Testament and the Gospel of John at chapter 6 and verses 24 to 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him and in whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you giving to us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. We sing hymn number 229, We Plough the Fields and Scatter, hymn 229.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illuminated by your word, shine with radiance of his glory, that his love may be known in the world, as he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I like trucking. I like trucking. I like trucking and I like to truck. I like trucking. I like trucking. If you don't like trucking, tough luck. You would have to be over 50, probably, to remember the song called I Like Trucking that those lyrics came from. It was first heard in 1981 on the satirical comedy program, Not the Nine O'Clock News. <coughs> if you do remember it, you might remember it for what was controversial about it, or if not controversial, then for its bad taste. The video to the song featured a hedgehog meeting its end under the wheels of a heavy goods vehicle and then forming the basis for a not-so-tasty snack. Rewatching this video uh, this week, this past week, as I did, the hedgehog scene was not an easy watch, but it would probably pass unnoticed today. What wouldn't pass unnoticed would be the song's relentless, casual stereotyping of HGV drivers. They plague the roads with malicious driving in the song, they enjoy the worst of cafe cuisine, they pick up female hitchhikers for sex, but nevertheless are suspected of being gay, an accusation that in 1981 stereotypically again constituted, uh, constituted an embarrassing slur on someone's character. The stereotyping is meant to be funny, of course, and <clears throat> it was funnier in 1981 than it is today, 40 years on. Nevertheless, re-watching it this week, I realised that today the laugh is most definitely on us. <clears throat> It is little known that Martin Luther, Martin Luther King, well known as an American activist for civil rights in the 1960s, was equally concerned for labour rights. Many of his speeches on that issue are published in a book called All Labour Has Dignity. Last year, we learned to our surprise that the dignity of all labour included people such as nurses, delivery drivers and shelf stackers. In 2021, this year, we are learning, again to our surprise, that the dignity of all labour includes HGV drivers. This week, the lack of HGV drivers caused by the pandemic and to a certain extent by Brexit has meant empty petrol forecourts. Recently, it has meant empty supermarket shelves. If some headlines are to be believed, it will mean that Christmas might be cancelled. This morning, we celebrate our Harvest Festival. This is an opportunity for us to rejoice at the bounty of God's provision brought forth from the soil by the sun and the rain that sustains our lives. The raw materials that go into the food we eat and the fuel we burn to heat that food, to keep ourselves warm and to power the cars, power our cars amongst other things. This morning is also an opportunity for us to celebrate the work of those who take that provision from the earth 
and put it on our plates and into our boilers. In the past, that rejoicing in God's provision would have been for food that felt local, or at least national. And that celebration of work done would have been for people we might know. Today, that is not the case when we celebrate our harvest festival. Food on our plate and fuel in our homes comes who knows how and is delivered by who knows whom. The provision of food and fuel today is a consequence of complex logist logistical systems that are largely unknown to anyone who is not in the trade. Most of the time, we don't need to know how these complex logistical systems work or who works in them. But on the rare occasion when they break down, because, because we don't know how they work or who works in them, we don't know how to cope with their malfunction, and we panic by. Complex international logistical supply chains are both marvellously efficient and very robust, but they can be also very vulnerable when things start to go wrong. Who would have known that the disruptions in the supply of natural gas that has led to increased heating bills and higher food prices would have been the result of a perfect storm caused in part by a glorious Scottish summer that was unusually windless? Our holidays might have been the better for that, but not our pockets. The wind turbines that provide our renewable energy were this summer too often idle. We may look back to what we imagine was a simpler and more straightforward world where stereotyping was casual and ignored, where food and fuel were local and communities were integrated. But the truth is, the modern complexity which delivers God's bounty to our tables and our homes, was never not complex. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament this morning, we can see the complexity at the heart of God's provision. In the Old Testament reading, the people fleeing Egypt were promised that, as the nation of Israel, they would discover a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. However, that promise of such a glorious bounty did not come free. Over the course of their flight from Egypt, the emergent nation had been taught by periods of hunger that were only relieved by God's provision of manna from heaven, that such a bounty can only be provided if the nation understands that it does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The glorious, beautiful harvest depended on keeping the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing in him. Those commandments were not agricultural commandments, good advice for farming. They were a complex, logistical set of laws that governed the nation, particularly governing people's relationships with each other, with God, and with the world God created. A good harvest depended on good community living, the outworking of complex logistical relationships. This too was the point that Jesus was making in the Gospel of John this morning, much like the Hebrews of the Old Testament, those who were with Jesus had experienced a miraculous provision of food, 
loaves and fish and look to Jesus to continue providing them with food. But instead, Jesus drew their attention not to the food he provided, but to the person he was. When they asked him, Sir, give us this bread always, he replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. If you want to eat, he was saying, pay attention to the person I am, the teaching I am giving, and the road I am walking upon to the cross and the resurrection. Live your relationships with each other and with God as I live mine, and you will be fed. Whether it's today's world, yesterday's world, or the biblical world, and this will be true of tomorrow's world also, the provision of God's bounty that sustains our lives exists not because there are fields we can walk to where we can dig up potatoes, but because of a complex logistical supply chain that is built every step of the way on good relationships between people and between people and the world around us. Those good relationships in the Old Testament and in the New Testament were governed by our relationship with God. They are still governed in that way today. This is God's world and these are God's people. And it is only when we respect people as God's people and the world as God's world that we can truly begin to rejoice in the harvest and to celebrate those who do the harvesting. If we disrespect the world and do not celebrate the lives of the people who labour in it to provide sustenance for us, then there will be no bounty to rejoice in. We might start by not laughing at HGV drivers and the lives they must live so that our shelves are stocked and our forecoats quiet. Barry Davis is a lorry driver from Manchester. He's 46, which is young. The average age of lorry drivers in the UK is a surprising 50. One third of British HGV drivers will retire in the next five years. It's not a job young people want to do. It is a job that plays havoc with relationships. Amanda, Mr. Davis's partner, is his seventh long-term girlfriend. Relationships one to six fell victim to his trucking. He was away too much. His fourth girlfriend died at home when he was on the road in Spain. He had to drive his truck home or risk it being stolen. It was the hardest, loneliest drive I've ever done, he says. Nevertheless, he also says, the thing about trucking is that you're the master of your own destiny. Is it a means to avoid challenges at home? Trucking has given me an out to facing up to normal life, he says. But what's normal life? I wouldn't know it if it hit me in the face. Trucking is a lonely job, of course, often boring, the pay isn't great, and conditions at truck stops or in the cabin overnight can be intolerable. Davis, Mr. Davis caught COVID and had to isolate in his truck in a lay-by for, for a feverish 10 days, helped only by a stranger who knocked on his door and brought him supplies. Trucking is always dangerous. For every year on the road, Mr. Davis can count a lorry driver he knows who has died on the job, from motorway crashes to being crushed by pallets while unloading. Taking all that into account, why does anyone do it? That's a good question, but thank God that people do, and that's why we're here today, to thank God that people do do it. Mr Davis is just one small cog 
in a bigger small cog that is part of the complexity of harvest logistical relationships that have always existed to sustain our lives with the food and fuel we need to live. It is important to thank God for the soil, sun and rain that produce the bounty of goodness that fills our plates. But man does not live by bread alone. He lives on the bread of life, who reminds us to love the God who lays down commandments for a flourishing community, a flourishing community life based on healthy relationships between people and between people and the environment around them. The bread of life, who teaches us that these relationships are based on love, our love for God and our neighbours, a love that remembers that all labour has dignity. Mr Davis once brought steel girders into London to build the shard. Whenever he looks at the London skyline, he thinks, there's a bit of me in that. It gives him a boost. As a kid, he grew up in care and felt worthless. This job, he says, has given him meaning. He likes to watch people with ordinary lives, browsing in shops, making purchases, enjoying themselves. It makes me smile, he says, seeing people buying stuff and knowing I've played a part in it. I just like to observe happiness. Now to the one who can keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory, jubilant and above reproach to the only God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, power and authority, through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all time, now and forevermore. Amen. We sing hymn number 141, O the life of the world, him one for one. point in the service we worship in offering something of what we have back to God through the church. St Ninian's is a self-financing charity like all churches of Scotland and if you wish to contribute to the work of the church and the growth of the kingdom of God you can do so following the link below or in the intimations you can see how to contact me or St Ninian's treasurer. Remembering all that the church receives, whether on a Sunday morning or electronically or in any other way, we acknowledge that we give in thankfulness with gratitude and joy. With prayerfulness, we give in sacrifice and love. With a spirit of hopefulness, we give in commitment to God in the person of Jesus Christ. 
We sing our dedication this morning, our hymn, Dedication Harvest, Dedication Hymn, number 226, God Whose Farm is All Creation. Let us now bring the needs of the church, the world, and all in need to God's loving care. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, our God, for the giving of the harvest, the variety of food that gives enjoyment to our eating, the colours of the fruit that brings beauty to our table, the diversity of vegetables that give us so much choice, the local produce that gives us freshness each day, the far-flung traded foods that give us ample supplies throughout the year. Thanks be to you, our God, for the giving of the harvest, for all who work to bring it home, those who sow, nurture and reap, those who transport and sell, those who cultivate and improve, those who prepare and cook, those who advise and instruct. Thanks be to you, O God, for the giving of the harvest, but what of those whose harvest is meagre? We remember those who have no food because the cost of living or the help that has been cut has thrown them into poverty, or because of environmental disaster, or because war stops trade, or because government mismanagement causes famine. We pray for a world where there is a great harvest of peace, of justice and of love, so that those who have little may have much, those who are the last may be the first, those who are the least may know what it is like to sit at the top table. We pray for those who use their influence to help others in need, for aid agencies, those who donate and sacrifice, those who invent ways to make trade both free and fair. We pray for the leaders and workers of industry, that they will see their place in the world as a benefit for everyone, and that the harvest of their talents and labour will be justly shared and brought forth for the building and the growing of your kingdom, to transform the lives and livelihoods of everyone. As we remember those across the world who have little to harvest, we pray also for those whom we know who are hungry, hungry for food, hungry for love, hungry for good health. Make us, Lord, truly their neighbours, drawing close to them in love. In this time of silence, we bring to mind all those whom we know who need your love and our care today. Gracious God, every time we eat a meal, remind us of your presence. <clears throat> every time we drink, remind us of your blessings. Every time we see a need, give us a spirit of generosity. Every time we enjoy your creation, 
fill us with thanks and praise, so that when we gather again next harvest time, we shall know that you have sustained us and that we have lived and given ourselves for you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we gather before you to give thanks for the blessings in our lives, to share your generosity with others, and to give praise to you, Creator of heaven and earth. Fill our hearts with gratitude for this world we live in. And as we prepare to leave this place today, may your spirit guide us, renew us, and strengthen us, that we may be strong in faith, courageous in witness, and persistent in good deeds. We ask all this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our final harvest hymn, hymn number 231, for the fruits of all creation. Thanks be to God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>